Aesir archetype, known in the Japanese as the Polar Gods, are three powerful synchro monsters whose designs and names all originate from Norse mythology. The three legendary monsters are Thor, Lord of the Azir, Loki, Lord of the Azir, and Odin, Father of the Azir. The idea behind the archetype is to get one of these monsters on the field as fast as possible, to take advantage of their unique abilities to control either monster effects, spell or trap effects, or even become immune to all three. Not only that, but they also have the power to bring themselves back from the graves should they be destroyed. And in fact, when they return, they benefit the user with a unique effect. These monsters were first introduced as divine beasts in the anime, putting them on par with the original gods of the Yu-Gi-Oh series, the Egyptian gods. However, sadly, after the Aesir's real-world debut in 2010's Storm of Ragnarok, all three would be downgraded from divine beasts to simple regular types. Though the Aesir serve as the win condition of the archetype, they are not alone as they are supported by four sub-archetypes, with each one acting as disciples in a way for a specific Aesir god. Thor's sub-archetype are the Nordic beasts, Loki's are the Nordic alpha, Odin's are the Nordic ascendants, and the final one is the Nordic relics, which serve as supplementary spell and traps for all three. Every one of the Aesir and Nordic cards have influences rooted deep in Norse mythology. So, how about we take a look at each one of the Nordic gods and their sub-archetypes and see what they are inspired by, starting with... Thor Lord of the Aesir, known in the Japanese as Polar God Emperor Thor. He requires one Nordic Beast tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters. His effect is once per turn, you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face-up card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Beast tuner from your graveyard, special summon this card. If summoned this way, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. This Lord of Aesir is based on the God of Thunder, Thor. His name of Thor is derived from Old Norse language, and it means thunder. So for a God of Thunder, whose name means thunder, why on earth is this monster not a thunder type? In fact, there are so few thunder type monsters in the Yu-Gi-Oh game, if you were to pile up Basically, every single Yu-Gi-Oh! monster card, only 1.6% of those would be Thunder types. Basically, I did a whole video on types of monsters that got done dirty, and Thunders, well, they were one of them. Check it out if you fancy, but if not, eh, no worries. So who is Thor? Well, he is the son of Odin, the god of wisdom, and Jord, the goddess of Earth. He was born as an Aesir in one of the nine Norse worlds known as Asgard. His title of Aesir basically meant that he was a part of the first main pantheon of Norse gods. Gods. These included others like Odin, Loki, Frigg, Boulder, Tyr, and a handful more. And of all these Aesirs, Thor was the strongest. His strength was only supplemented more by the iconic hammer he wielded, Mjolnir. Mjolnir was said to be the most fearsome weapon ever created, being able to level an entire mountain if the user so wished. And while this monster is holding a hammer in its artwork, it's not actually Mjolnir. This one's Mjolnir. Together Thor and Odin ruled and protected the lives of mortal men. That is, until their reign would come to an end with the arrival of Ragnarok. We'll talk more about that later. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's anime, Thor is wielded by Dragon, a member of Team Ragnarok, and one of only three individuals who wield the Rune Eyes. When he summons Thor, he has a summoning chant which, in the original Japanese, went a little bit like this. When the door of Asgard opens, the ancient war god will raise up his magical hammer and the very earth itself will shake as he appears from a roar of thunder. Synchro summon, descend, polar god King Thor. In the English dubbed version, the chant is altered. Instead, it goes, watch as the Nordic glaciers of old give way, and from the deepest chasms of ice, an ancient and powerful hero emerges. A hero who wields the quaking power of a pounding avalanche. I synchro summon Thor, Lord of the Azir. Only a small thing, but the dubbed version seems to be alluding more that Thor wields 
avalanche powers rather than thunder and lightning. But I guess the quaking power of a pounding avalanche smashing together would sound like thunder. So yeah, who am I to judge? He knows what he's talking about. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, each of the Aesir gods is only able to be summoned by using a specific Nordic sub-archetype as their tuner monsters. And as such, it could be safe to say they act as worshippers for that specific god. For four, he is supported by the Nordic beasts. These include... I'm gonna butcher a lot of these names, so keep that in mind. Garma of the Nordic beasts who is based on Garm, the chained bloodstained guardian to the gates of hell. That's hell with one L, by the way, and keep in mind that hell is both a place and a literal person in Norse mythology. Hell the person is a being who presides over the realm of the dead. Hell. <laughs> she is in charge of the souls that don't actually quite make it to Valhalla. In fact, she's the daughter of Loki and was given this role by Odin himself. Guldfax of the Nordic Beasts. Guldfax is based on Gullfaxi, the golden horse, which was basically a really fast and awesome horse that was given as a gift by Thor to his son Magni. However, Odin gets a bit meaved by this as he felt that he should have gotten the awesome horse instead since he's, you know, all father Odin. Let's be fair, I saw where Thor was coming from since Odin already had a super awesome horse. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had the best horse in the entire world. It was called Sleipnir, which was basically a horse with eight legs and was really, really fast. And fun fact, this horse was a gift of Loki and it was also one of his offspring. Tang Nostir of the Nordic Beasts and Tang Grisnir of the Nordic Beasts. I feel like I did a good job with them. Both of these monsters in Norse mythology were the goats that pulled Thor's chariot. And I wish I could end the story there, but well, this is where it gets a bit messed up. Thor, every now and then, would chop up these goats and cook and eat them when he was hungry or if he just wanted to feed people. Then through the power of Mjolnir, he'd resurrect them and make them pull the chariot again. He'd do this often which is pretty dark when you think about it. But what's even worse is he fed one of the goats to a kid once and the kid snapped one of the goats' bones in half and the kid sucked out all the bone marrow. So when Thor resurrected them once again, one of the goats didn't fully recover and so walked with a, a bit of a limp. So yeah, that's really, it's really dark. Loki, Lord of the Aesir, known in the Japanese as Polar God Emperor Loki. It requires one Nordic Alpha tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters. His effect is once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card during your battle phase, quick effect, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face-up card you controlled was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Alpha tuner from your graveyard special summon this card. When summoned this way, you can target one trap in your graveyard, add that target to your hand. This Lord of Aesir is based on the trickster god Loki. Loki is the son of a giant known as Farbani. Despite him being no relation to Thor or Odin, he is still included among the Aesir due to his value as a companion to them. For you see, he was able to transform himself into any shape he wished, along with the fact they had incredible cunning and intelligence. Using these skills, he would contribute often to Thor and Odin's successes. However, unfortunately, due to his nature, he was equally responsible for many of the gods' greatest humiliations as well, eventually leading to him becoming an enemy to the gods, being the reason for the god Baldur's death. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's anime, Loki is wielded by the Team Ragnarok member Broder. When he summons this monster, he chants, The god that was born from the stars. Show us your absolute power and make the world laugh. Synchro summon, descend, Polar God King Loki. Something interesting about Loki that we touched on earlier is the fact that he has several children. He had Hel, the goddess of death, Jormungand, the serpent that surrounds the world, and Fenrir, the wolf. Though not a part of any of the main sub-archetypes, these children of Loki are present in the Nordic archetype. They are shown as Fenrir the Nordic Wolf. In the lore, Fenrir was deemed too dangerous to roam free by the gods, as it was foretold that it would kill Odin during the events of Ragnarok. Due to this prophecy, Fenrir was bound with an unbreakable chain, which is referenced in the card Glepnir the Fetters of Fenrir. Ironically, in the anime, you say technically beat Odin with this monster, since he had used his speed spell Star Force to amplify the attack of his shooting star dragon in order to overpower Odin. So clearly, someone at Konami did their research. 
Search. In fact, this monster's ability to special summon itself to the opponent's side of the field almost seems to reference its antagonistic nature to the gods. This same principle applies to the other child of Loki, Jormungandir the Nordic Serpent. Known in Norse mythology as the World Serpent, Odin again deemed this child of Loki too dangerous, as it was prophesied Thor would be killed by it during Ragnarok. So Odin cast Jormungand into the ocean, where it remained and grew, growing so large in fact that it was able to wrap itself around the entire earth and grasp its own tail in its mouth. It is said that when it releases its tail, Ragnarok would begin. If the image of a serpent eating its own tail seems familiar, well, it's because it's something that has been depicted in religion for a very long time, ever since ancient Egypt with the Ouroboros. Which again, you could tie the fact that the Nordic gods are again related to the Egyptian gods through this. However, Loki is also supported by the Nordic Alphars, which each reference a race within Norse mythology. For instance, the Verg of the Nordic Alfar are referencing Norse dwarves, who live deep within mountains due to the fact that they cannot be exposed to sunlight, or else they will be turned to stone. They were incredibly talented, these dwarves, especially in the arts of mining and smithing. One of these dwarves, in fact, was known as Alvis of the Nordic Alfar. A little story about Alvis, he was a dwarf that was intended to marry Thor's daughter, Thrud. Thor was a little bit unhappy about this, so wanted to cancel the wedding. To do this, he told Alvis that, because of his lack of stature, he would have to prove that he was at least wise. Alvis agreed to the challenge, but Thor made his tests last until dawn, where Alvis was turned to stone due to his exposure to sunlight. Losalf of the Nordic Alfar and Svaltolf of the Nordic Alfar. In Norse mythology, there are two types of elves that act as opposites to one another. There are the Losalfur that live in Alfheim. These are known as the Light Elves. In contrast, there are also the Svaltalf that reside in Svaltaheim. These are known as the Dark Elves. Mara of the Nordic Alfar. Finally, Mara is referencing the mischievous Norse race of goblins, which literally exists to cause trouble for mankind. Odin, father of the Aesir, known in the Japanese as Polar God, Sacred Emperor Odin, requires one Nordic Ascendant Tuna and two or more non-Tuna monsters. His effect is once per turn, you can make this card be unaffected by spell and trap effects until the end of this turn. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face up card you control was destroyed by your opponent's cards and sent to your graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Ascendant Tuna from your graveyard, special summon this card. When summoned this way, you can draw one card. This Lord of Aesir is based on Odin the Allfather the god of wisdom, war and prophecy. His title of god of prophecy was given to him through his ability to see into the future, something he had acquired by sacrificing one of his very own eyes in order to achieve. He did this by casting his eye into a mystical tree known as Yzzz, a mystical tree known as Idrisil. The tree is said to connect the nine worlds together. As one of the most powerful Aesirs, his might is shown through many aspects of his card form. For instance, he has the highest attack and defense of all three Aesirs. He is the largest of them when summoned and has an ability to make himself completely immune from monster effects. He is even the cover card for the booster pack he comes from in Storm of Ragnarok. Odin is wielded by the leader of Team Ragnarok, Haldor, and when he summons Odin, the chant he uses to bring him forth goes a little something like this. The all-seeing and all-powerful king who rules the heavens, circling the North Star. Now show your might that reigns over the gods of Asgard. Synchro summon, he who rules the world obtained by the gods, the highest god, polar god, sacred emperor Odin. In the English dub version, this chant is shortened significantly to divinity rise behold the ruler of all things i synchro summon the ultimate nordic god odin father of the azir odin is supported by the nordic ascendants and these are gulveig the nordic ascendant the first and currently only nordic link monster in the game this monster is actually based on gulveig a female figure from norse mythology that not actually too much is known about some say she might actually be Freya, the goddess of love. However, there is another card that more closely associates itself with that Norse god, and that is Vandis of the Nordic Ascendant. Vandis is actually one of the alternative names for Freya. 
Mimir of the Nordic Ascendant. Mimir is the owner of Mimir's well and uses that water on the tree of Yggdrasil into which Odin cast its eye to gain his wisdom of the future. Valkyrie of the Nordic Ascendant. The Valkyries in Norse mythology are minor female Norse gods that basically serve Odin, acting out his will and such. We have one final Nordic monster that is not actually a part of any of the sub-archetypes as well, and that is Tyr of the Nordic Champions, which in Norse mythology, he is the god of justice and was at one time the leader of all the Norse gods. So then finally, we have all the support cards. Let's start with the Nordic Relics and what they are based on. I'm going to butcher every one of these, so get ready. Nordic Relic Brising Gaiman, that's based on Freya's necklace. Nordic Relic Droughtnir, that's based on the gold ring possessed by Odin, which had the ability to multiply itself. In the case of this card, it's multiplying his armor instead. Nordic Relic Gungnir, this is Odin's magical spear, which always, and I mean always, hits its mark and always guarantees a kill. Nordic Relic Lavertain. This is a sword referenced in Norse mythology, apparently known as Damage Twig. Not much is known about it, so I, I can't really say more. Nordic Relic Megingjord. This is a belt worn by Thor, and it is said when he wears this belt, it doubles his strength, which is actually referenced in this card's effect too. Some other miscellaneous spells and traps in the archetype are Divine Relic Mjolnir, which is based on the Mjolnir Hammer, the Nordic Lights, which references the Northern Lights, Glepnir, the Fetters of Fenrir, it references the Forged Unbreakable Chains, Odin's Eye, it's, uh, it's Odin's Eye, and March Towards Ragnarok, which is of course referencing the most influential moment in Norse mythology. Oh, and I forgot God it I'm wrong. It too is referencing Ragnarok, specifically the aftermath of the event. The cataclysmic event foretold by Odin, where almost all of the Norse gods are doomed to fall. Ragnarok. Odin, Thor, Tyr, Freya, Heimdall, and Loki would all perish in this battle, after which the world is submerged in water. It would take many years, but after the events of Ragnarok, the world will one day resurface anew and fertile. The surviving gods will reunite in the new world, which will then be repopulated by two human survivors. And with that guys, that is another archetype video done.